Hello there, this is Preston Cohn, and I'm excited to talk to you a little bit about real estate and why Facebook and Google and digital marketing in general is a good plan for you guys. And so we're going to talk a little bit about why Facebook first, because I think that's important for you to understand. Then we're going to talk about what we can do as a first initial step that will give us the most momentum and the best foundation for the next step, which is really where we capitalize and start to get leads that actually convert and are ready to buy and sell using the listings that you have and using other experience uh, and trust factors that we can show people, homes that you've bought in the past and other things that we'll walk through. So very excited to go through this with you. But for first, let's start on the things that, that I think you need to, to focus in. And the interesting thing about this that people might not understand is you can target in on zip code, you can target On zip code, you can target in on uh, the location that they live down to a, a mile radius. You can you can go down pretty much as, as close and as local as you want to be uh, within a certain kind of ramifications. Facebook doesn't want you to get too close and just target one or two, two or three people. But you're able to really target in on people with that. So that's great. Another thing you're able to do, uh, excuse me if I'm able to switch sides there. There, uh, 70 to 75 percent of people sign with the first realtor they work with. Well, what does that mean? That means we need to use digital ads to stay in the forefront of mind, to stay top of mind, and to keep people aware of the fact that we have uh, the, the availability and the resources to help them with finding their home or selling their home. But the problem is oftentimes that can take years, right? So if you reached out to someone six months ago, they might be ready to convert in six months, but if they don't remember you, if they don't, if you don't stay top of mind for them, they may go with the new friend that they found or someone else that someone else has recommended simply because they don't remember. So it's important to use digital ads, not only even ads, but social posts to stay top of mind. And we'll talk about that in a second. So why does Facebook make sense again? Well, digital real estate listings that include a video receive 403% more inquiries than those without. Now that's kind of a weird number, right? So, you know, one with a video, one without a video might might have performed sort of similarly, but what they're saying essentially is if you have a digital presence and if you have a video especially, video seems to be performing a lot better uh, than static images at the moment. So you're able to use video and get better results um, and get more traffic to your home, right? It's not always about being able to um, say, hey, in general, I know that this person signed a form, gave me their lead information, and here's what it is. Oftentimes in the real estate space, it's about staying top of mind and staying uh, aware so people can remember who we are, what we have, and what we serve. As they remember and see the videos of the homes that we're buying or uh, selling for our customers, they're going to feel more trust with us. They're going to understand that, okay, we really do know what we're talking about. Uh, we're able to sell those types of homes. If so, great. Why don't you sell my home? Or why don't you help me buy a home that looks similar to that? 77% of first-time home buyers drove by a home that they first viewed online. Um, that's a, a stat that probably most of us would have expected, right? If you're going to be a first-time home buyer in this digital age, you're going to be looking at uh, the homes online likely first before you go, unless you have just a specific, specific target area that you want and you might need help with. Um, recently, as we were looking to buy a home, we were actually, you know, constantly looking at websites that offered information that might have a home listing available in the area that we wanted to buy um, that might not have been on, you know, uh, real estate, uh, realtor.com or, or, you know, one of those sites because it's just wasn't listed yet. Maybe it was a new build or something like that. So, you know, there's a lot of things like that where uh, people are looking online. So how do we leverage showing them that information and showing them, uh, you know, something that will allow them for us to then gather their information and understand, hey, okay, this is the type, this is the type of person looking for this home. Let me reach out to those people directly. Here's a stat that I think is a little bit more shocking. 73% of senior home buyers go online to search for a home. Now, this is kind of crazy. Like, if you think about that, that is a huge portion of the market that are ready to buy more expensive homes because, you know, more likely those are the folks who have. Uh, a little bit more experience. They've had uh, a lot, lot longer time to save and to grow, and they know what they want, whether that be 
to go into a downsize into a condo or go into a, a larger home or, you know, whatever they are in that space, they understand how the game works. They know what they want to do and they just need someone to help them get there. So if you're that person, again, staying top of mind and reminding them that this is that you're the person to help them with that is going to be crucial. And using ads and other mechanisms to actually reach out to those people, bring them to you and say, hey, I do a really good job with the market that you're interested in. Uh, let me help you is a, is a really good way to do that. So it's not just younger folks that are on Facebook anymore, right? The majority of people on Facebook are actually, you know, between the ages of probably 25 and, you know, 65. So we have a, a high, it's, it's getting, it's scaling its way up. Um, and as, as that happens, Instagram continues to be a good place to reach out those audiences who are younger. And Instagram can be a great place to just promote our content and promote pretty homes as well. But it still leans younger, so it's not quite as good at driving leads um, for real estate that uh, Facebook is at, at this point. Okay, and then the final thing we're going to talk about here, and then I'm going to go into some other information and show you some, some what we're going to go into in the next segments of this course and of this training is essentially um, how do you now grow your Facebook page and grow your Instagram account to – to, to have that social proof to show that you actually are someone who knows what you're talking about, who can actually help people in that industry and in the specific homes that you're trying to sell uh, or, or, you know, help buy for your customers and that you can kind of become that expert. So people want to follow you and that you can then stay top of mind. That's the first step, right? Grow your team, grow your social channels, make yourself trusted expert in the area, in the field. Um, and that will be the first step. Step one is that. Step two is then taking it to another level, right? This is where larger teams, people who are really willing to invest and uh, understand that it is an investment into their business that will help them in the long run. You know, I work with people who um, you know, spend a lot of money on advertising, but, but they know that whether that person converts month one or month 12, that person is going to be extremely valuable for them. So one, two, three conversions might pay for your entire marketing budget online, um, um, you know, in a year, right? So it's not that costly when you think about it from a long-term approach. The problem is it can take a little bit of a, of a, um, you know, a jump start. It can take a while to see those results start to come in unless you use or work with someone like us who knows how to do this and has had the experience to, to do it a little bit better. But again, you got to have that first step. You don't want to get started with this uh, and go to step two first because you won't have that social proof and people won't be able to, to believe in you as much. And so you won't get as better, as good of a cost result, cost per lead, getting the email, phone number and all that kind of stuff as you would if you go through this system. <coughs> Excuse me. So where did home buyers find the home that they purchased? Just in summary, internet, 51%. 51% of the people found the home online. Um, that's amazing. So, you know, why would we not be taking this as a huge, huge focus for our business, especially in the real estate space? I mean, this just, just, just makes sense. Real estate agent, 30%, right? That means you guys are pounding the pavement and you're doing a really good job, which is important. But if 51% of people can can get, you know, buy a home through the internet, why not you be the one that they buy the home from, right? That's the key. Um, and then, of course, there's yard signs and friends and all of those other things that have slightly smaller numbers. So the first thing that we do then is what? Well, we want to grow our Facebook page. And uh, by doing that, we're able to actually get, let's see if this loads for us. Come on there. All right, well, we'll load that in here in a second. But while we're doing that, we'll look at our Facebook. Uh, this is very slow. There we go. Facebook Ads Manager to actually show you the results of what we're getting for someone. So here's a client who is looking to grow their Facebook page, get more Facebook likes. We're getting those for about a dollar a piece. Um, you know, that's just expected, right? It, it takes some time. You've got to grow your account to get some proof. Um, and this is someone who's got some experience and has some, some you know, understanding of how this works. But we have a multi-funnel approach, essentially. We've got prospecting, where we're trying to get people who have never seen us, interested in us. Uh, traffic generation, again, this is trying to fill our funnel, get as many people as we possibly can to 
begin at the initial part of the funnel because we know there's going to be a lot of tire kickers. There's going to be a lot of people who won't actually complete the form and fill it out. And then we got a conversions campaign. And a conversions campaign is specifically targeting people who are really, really interested in buying or selling. And we're trying to get them to fill out that form, uh, give us that information so that we can reach out or the real estate agent and team can reach out uh, and get in front of them about it. You can see the cost per lead is pretty inexpensive. Um, as we go across this and we're getting, we're getting a lot of a lot of registrations completed for this client in the last 14 days. So it's really wonderful what we've been able to do for them. Um, and we're helping them to kind of clarify who are good leads and who aren't good leads. And so that's a good thing for you to be able to learn as well and be able to key into. But the key to this, um, you know, of course, is to grow your Facebook page, continue to post consistently, continue to uh, analyze the data of your posting and see, hey, where am I doing well? Where am I I'm not doing well? What time of day should I post? Who's the people that are interacting with my posts? Do I need to boost those posts? Should I put some ad dollars behind them? There's a lot that goes into just social organic posting and growing your Facebook page. And that's something we're going to dive into in our next video on how do you manage our Facebook page to get the best possible results, build trust, and get leads um, that are ready for us and, and set that foundation for phase two, which is, again, these campaigns that actually help us to get conversions, get leads and, and look for people who are interested in what we do using our listing. It doesn't have to be crazy. We don't have to have, you know, beautiful thousand uh, dollar ads. What we just have to have is ads that are well put together, that make sense and that uh, show our listings to the right people. That's the key. you got to show them to the right people. And then when you get there in phase two, which we're going to talk about here in just a little bit, is how do you convert those people? Well, a great way to convert those people is by using an IDX website such as this, which would allow you to push from those ads on Facebook to this website and say, hey, you want to search for a home? Search for a home. You don't need to do anything else. You don't even need to see us, really. We're not even going to try to sell you about who our team is um, too much. We're going to just give you an opportunity to use a tool that seems like there's no strings attached, right? It seems like there's really nothing here that would keep us from wanting to fill this out. So if I landed on this page and I saw this, I'd be like, okay, well, looks like they're, you know, they're experts in the San Antonio, Texas Hill Country real estate. And then you get into a little bit about the team down below and who they are and the homes. Now, here's the thing. Most people or a lot of people don't understand if you're getting into the real estate game, you don't understand that the IDX sites that they have out there actually connect to an MLS. And the MLS is what, the, you know, what all of the homes are essentially stored on. That's my bad. It's a, it's a data site essentially, right? So you're able to pull that information into your website. You pay a small fee and then you can then have any area that you want to be able to allow people to search from. So in this example, they show Bear County and Kendall County because they bought data for those sites. So no matter whose listing these are, they're able to show them on their site and let people search for them. So let's just say I'm in Bear and my price range is 700,000 and uh, I got no limit because I'm a baller, I wish. And here are the cities, but we're just going to leave that open, right? So we're going to search. As we search, so someone saw our ad, they saw our listing, they clicked on our listing, visited this page, right, the home page. They saw our website, they saw our information, and now what are they doing? Well, now they're looking at the homes. Now they have a list of homes that are in those price range. It looks like the price range is a little high for my, my blood, but um, it's in those price ranges, and you're able to then be able to look through those and view them. Now, you want to get information on this home, you want to see more information, you just simply click on that and see what happens. This is, this is a crucial piece that a lot of people don't have set up correctly. You want to have it with a delay kind of just like that. So you get to the website, you can see the list of homes, you click on the list of homes, you then go to a home page, it kind of loads and you see it and then you get this pop-up. And essentially, think of this as a paywall. And you've seen these before, right? For content where they, they drive you and they say, hey, go to the site or go to the, you know, the New, York, New York Times or other websites, magazines who say, hey, view this article. And then when you get there, they say, well, we got to pay us $2.99 to get in and see this article. It's kind of like that. We're trying to get people who are not really interested to leave right now. 
We do not want someone who's just like, oh man, that's a beautiful home. I hope someday down the road I can buy that. We're not really interested in that. We really want people who are ready to purchase or sell their home right now to look at our, our information. So this gets, gets rid of a lot of people. There's a lot of people who are going to bounce right now from the website and good riddance. We don't want them. Um, but the ones that do stay and fill out this information, we're able to then see a lot of things about who they are. We're able to see the property values of the homes that they viewed, the average property value of the home that they viewed, uh, the number of times that they've searched on our website. Did they save any homes on our website? Um, did they, uh, you know, did they, um, there's a lot of, what search criteria, how many homes did they view multiple times? We can see this in a really clear dashboard on the back end that lets you say, okay, here's a top priority person and here's a low priority person. I'm going to send this person to one of my team members or someone else to help close that person or get them into an email funnel uh, to help close them long term down the road. Maybe they get an email once a month for us. And then this person up here who, who viewed you know, $5 million properties and was uh, interested in, you know, they, they came and they came back two or three times and, you know, all this type of stuff. We can reach out to them directly with a phone call and really focus in on that person being a high quality lead. So a lot of really good information here. We're going to dive into this more in the next video series. If you liked this and if you think that this might be valuable for you, I'm going to provide a lot more in-depth uh, valuable knowledge bombs really in the next videos. And so that's where we're going to talk about how do you actually apply these principles? How do you actually build and grow your social account that it will, will be ready to be, be a strong foundation for your ad campaigns and for your lead generation and for your website like this that you build out? How to build it out? What tools to use? And how do I even use the listings that I have now to drive leads for me? If you're saying that, you want to talk to us and you probably want to skip ahead and go ahead and get in, get in touch because if you're able to get to that step two, you already have that social proof. You already have that trust built. You're doing really well on the social game. Then we really want to help you because I think that's something that you need. You, you probably need to go ahead and take advantage of. Uh, in fact, if, if I were to tell you that you had the opportunity to spend $2,000, 3000 a month on Facebook, you might say, man, that's a lot of money. But if I could tell you, hey, out of that, you're going to get, you know, uh, 30, 40, 50, maybe, maybe a lot more leads, probably based on the numbers that we have, probably a lot more leads than that, that you're going to be able to get in touch with and convert even just one, two, three deals in the next three or four months. You more than paid for my marketing services. You've more than paid for your ad spend, right? And you're able to then understand why this is a long-term approach. So Long story short, stay with us, watch the next videos. We'd love to have you. We hope that this is a good introduction for you and something that is valuable. If it is, please give us a thumbs up and uh, a like this video, and we'd love to, love to help you with more uh, content and more help down the road. Thanks so much. This is Preston from Cone Creatives, and we are signing out.